Great war is at its height. Not only have many of Chip's former pupils been killed, but also his best friend, the German master. to be the headmaster of Brookfield after all. But only as long as the war should last. After nearly two years of deadlock, our generals planned a great summer offensive to break through the enemy lines into the open country beyond. July the 1st, 1916. The Battle of the Somme. Masters, boys of the school, even as I speak, the greatest battle the world has ever known is taking place. The War Office has published the first list of officers killed in the offensive. And it includes the names of 23 former boys of this school. Anderson M.R., Lieutenant Royal Scots. Michael Anderson went up to Oxford in 1912. And there, you, there, there he won the, the, um, the, the Nudica Prize for poetry. Do you know, he, he, he used to send me his uh, verses. <laughs> he was an outstanding poet, destroyed in the flower of his youth. Balzaghetti, E.J., Major Royal Corps of Signals. He was in schoolhouse from 1899 to 1904. He was a most ingenious inventor, even as a boy, <laughs> and became an expert in telephone communications. He was so gentle. Browning F., Lieutenant Sherwood Foresters. Frederick Browning was at the school Chips from 1910 to 1915. Old men are like that. He was commissioned earlier this year and came to see me on his embarkation What's up with four Bob? weeks ago. You know, his dad Just was wounded. Lieutenant well, at least he wasn't killed. He Shh. was in Blue House. Honestly, this is ridiculous. Greek translation. Huh. We'd be officers in a fortnight's time. Officers and gentlemen. Huh. You're right. Old Punsonby can whistle for his Greek cancer spirit. What do you think is the matter with Bob? I don't know. He's been strange since he went to the hospital. Mm. His father must have been pretty badly wounded. Mm. Oh, hello, Bob. You doing that Thucydides for old Punsonby? No, Good nor are we. Look here, Bob. I hate to butt in. Is your dad... I mean... Is his life in danger? I wish it were. What on earth do you mean? Look, old chap, where there's life... Shut is... up! I was only trying to cheer you up. Oi. Be quiet. Is there anything we can do? Just leave me alone. We really ought to go and see your dad. No! Now leave me alone. Right. Coming for a walk. Sorry, Bob. Awfully sorry. Come in. Harry, 
Sorry, Chips. Going to chuck a problem into your lap. Rather a nasty one, I'm afraid. Inside you. Terrace. You're looking at the best platoon commander in the OTC. All of a sudden, he won't parade. He won't put on a uniform. Why not? It's wrong, sir. What's wrong? The war is wrong, sir. <laughs> You're going in the guards in a few weeks. I'm not, sir. You are, man. You've been interviewed. You've had your medical. You've signed your enlistment papers. Hell's bells, you're in the army as soon as it wants you. I shan't go. I've written to the war office. You went to see your father in hospital the other day, didn't you? Now, has, has he got anything to do with that? Harry. Y yes, of course. You can tell me. Let's sit, sit, sit down. You've suffered some terrible shock, haven't you? You can, trust me. I couldn't talk to anyone, sir. I couldn't. Sir, I went with Mother to the hospital. The doctor told us it was very bad before we went into the room. Sir, my dad has no arms or legs or face. He can't see, speak or hear. The doctor says he will live. Oh, God have mercy on us. Mother just sat in a chair, looking. So I thought I was going to be sick. I ran out. I blubbed in the corridor. There was an officer there watching me. He was in a sort of long basket chair on wheels under a blanket. I think he had no legs. He sounded a bit mad. He asked me what I was sniveling about. He said, he said there were hospitals full of hulks. That was the word he used, sir, hulks, like that. And the same on the other side. And then he started swearing at the newspapers. He said it was all lies. Half the new army is dead. All of his battalion but 50 men. And we haven't advanced on the Somme, only a few hundred yards here and there. He said it's all been a shambles, a failure, the same as every other push. The nurse came and wheeled him away. I went back in and took Mother home. How was she when you left? Mother was always one for the stiff upper lip. She came downstairs the next morning and told me to go back to school. She said we must carry on. Yes. After what you've just told me, any words of comfort would seem cheap and useless. I think I understand you now. Yes, sir. Uh, but, Terrace, I must say more. You are a man. You must learn to master yourself as others have had to. You must try to think clearly. I have done, sir. The war is wrong. If, uh, if you do not answer the call, you will be a deserter. It's, it's too late to plead conscientious objection, and you can be shot for desertion. I'm not going to plead anything. I'm not going. Hmm. Well, I'm a, an old man living in, in safety. I cannot utter the exhortations of an armchair patriot to a boy of fighting age. But I am a patriot. I believe that my country is fighting the good fight. I honor Brookfield boys who serve and, and many of whom fall. Well, I can say no more. I shall not be your conscience, that is your own. The OTC here at school is a voluntary body. You are, of course, excused from that, but 
I beg of you, despite your shock and grief, to think again. I pray you come to your right mind. I have, sir. The war is wrong. Did you order this? I did. Ten times round senior field every morning. Why do you penalise him? I've excused him, OTC. This has nothing to do with OTC. I'm not penalising him. I've ordered it for his health. The good of his soul. Sweat the nonsense out of him. This is persecution. You do know that his roommates have left him. I don't blame them. No one likes a coward. This is not cowardice. What would you call it? A tragic moral courage. Greater, perhaps, than the courage required to fight. He faces a worse hell than France. There's no hell worse than France. I've spent 46 years of my life teaching boys to seek the truth, to serve God, and to obey the commands of their conscience. Now, here is a boy who's attempted to do all these things have made him an outcast. Let us not heap further tortures on him. You forced me to say this, Chips. It's your age. You're a weepy old granddad. I think not. I've tried to make him see that his duty. But I'll not have him driven to it. I'll not have him bullied. You've never had to bully men to go over the top. Keep out of this, Chips. Leave him to me. You'll stop this punishment. Now, that's an order, Harry. An order. Very well. Sir. the school becomes empty. It all looks unreal. Huh? You're determined to pursue your course? Yes, sir. You do know that you'll be arrested, don't you? Yes, sir. You are going to wait. I'm not going to run away, sir. I'm not a deserter. No, no, no. So you will, um... You'll wait at home, then, will you? No, sir. Mother won't have me in the house. She says I'm no son of hers until I go out and avenge Dad and Peter. Oh. So where would you go? I don't know, sir. Well, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests. Sir? Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Well, you're one of my boys. You'll wait here. I couldn't, sir. Hmm? He must hate the sight of me. You are one of my boys. You're one of Mrs. Wicketts. Now, we will not speak of this matter again, unless, of course, you wish to. Mrs. Wicket will make up a bed for you. You'll be our guest. At least we can offer you a little peace and company, eh? Until they come. Thank you, sir. There we are, Constable. That be Mrs. Wicketts. This is your last chance, Terrace. There's still time. I can make it all right. We'll get rid of that village bobby with some tail, then I'll get on to the war office. Tell them you're ready for service. 
Mrs. Wicked has lured him into the kitchen. We have a few minutes. Just say the word. I wish I could, sir. You can. You've been jolly decent, Mr. Kemp. I won't keep the chap waiting. Sir, I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Robert. God guide you well. Goodbye, Mr. Kemp. Damn this war. In 1918, the madness of war came to an end. It was formally decided that the armistice should take effect on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour. was, of course, also the end of my short career as headmaster. 
And alas, the end of my schoolmastering days altogether. After all, I was 70 years old. Mrs. Wicked! <coughs> oh, of course. Hello. I don't know you, do I? You must be a new boy. Yes, sir. What's your name? Linford, sir. The boys told me I had to report to Mr. Chips. Mr. Ch <coughs> Sorry. That's what they said, sir. Should I ask first, sir? Mr. Chips. Even the joke has become a tradition. A joke, sir. Yes, well, yeah, you mustn't get my cold. Uh, cut along and come and have tea with me one day when I'm better, eh? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, and Linford, you'll soon settle down at Brookfield. Yes, sir. Fine shock you gave us. Are you feeling all right? Uh, Merely that you passed out. Oh. Just for a little while. I told you not to go out in that cold, sir. But, well, it was Armistice Day, Doctor. It was Armistice Day. We'll have to watch your chest, old man. And you've strained your heart a wee bit. You're fine now, though, as long as you take it easy. Try and sleep. Keep him in bed, Mrs. Wicket, or he'll be sneaking out to watch the soccer. Yes, I, I will. Thank you. I'll be back. Stay with him. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Wixie. Catherine. Catherine. Is this a famous book? Yes, Headmaster. Those were all his memories of the school. It's a shame he couldn't have finished them. Good of you to come, Mr. Cartwright. How is he? Peaceful. Fading gently. Poor old chap. Must have lived a lonely sort of a life all by himself. Well, not always by himself. He married, you know. That's her. She was beautiful. I had no idea. She died, it must have been, oh, quite 30 years ago. Possibly more. Pity. Pity he never had any children. Hmm. Chips? Thousands of 